Hello, and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we will be talking about power weapons, everything you need to know about power weapons. Uh, so that will be uh, using power weapons against a variety of forces uh, as a Space Marine player, or as a, and with a specific twist on each weapon for Blood Angels players. Um, so at first we'll look at the sort of general power weapons, uh, and then we'll later on look at sort of some of the more unique weapons that you wouldn't see so often on the battlefield, but how to use those if you're interested in using them, uh, or you want to try something new, such as the uh, Eviscerator or the Relic Blade. So, uh, first of all, we'll look at the uh, standard sort of power weapons that you can take on absolutely any model that can take a power weapon. So that is uh, the Power Sword, uh, the Power Axe, uh, and the Power Maul slash lance because they're the same thing. Um, so first of all you've got the power sword. Now the power sword is perceived generally as a great all-rounder because uh, you're just relying on your standard marine strength 4 or you know if you're a guardsman strength 3 but if you will look from a marine perspective uh, strength 4 which means that you're wounding uh, anything toughness 3 on a 3 uh, and mo you know most of the things on a 4. So if you're fighting against other marines you've just got that edge because you've got that AP minus 3 uh, so it's really good against marines and as a blood angel if you charge your tap marines or assault marines with a sergeant with a power sword in there or you know other units with multiple power swords into an enemy unit you know that because that AP minus 3 they'll have the 6 up armor save uh, it's basically not there and as a blood angel you'll be wounding on 3's they'll be wounding you on 4's you know you'll definitely take some heads and you know you'll usually come out on top um, so a power sword is a really good uh, weapon to sort of get the upper hand in marine on marine combat, um, but unfortunately it's absolutely terrible against you know Eldar um, because it's just not going to work because of that AP minus three. You know you're sacrificing any strength bonuses or damage bonuses for you know really good armor penetration, but against uh, a high number of armies out there you know a lot of the infantry that you'll be going toe to toe with will have invulnerable saves these days um, so just harlequins and that kind of thing um, and you know just cast invun saves and you know just a variety of ways to avoid uh, you know high AP weapons being effective against them so you know in that case the power sword just is going to bounce off usually even with your um, ability to wound on a, on a slight advantage you're just not getting anywhere um, and you know an important thing to say at this point is that all of these power weapons you know if you're a, if you're a blood angel you'll be wounding anyone who's toughness 3 on 2 ups because uh, you'll have a strength advantage uh, 4 over toughness 3 which would be 3's and then wounding on 2 ups because of you're always doing plus 1 to wound in close combat uh, you know on the turn you charge or are charged so all of these have that advantage, I'll just say that right now. Um, now, a few s sort of slight extra details on the power sword is that um, against guard, it's slight overkill because um, although you know, you've got the advantage of wounding them really effectively, you don't need that AP minus three because you know guard equivalents or orcs, um, you know, who are uh, only have a six up armor save anyway. You know, a lot of units out there that three up, uh, that minus three AP, just is overkill. So although the power sword is generally perceived as a great all rounder, there are some you know holes in its abilities, or sometimes you know it's almost too good at some things. So you're trading off benefits elsewhere, like bo strength bonuses, which would benefit you uh, in close combat. So you know, power sword's good standard and if you fight against a lot of marines you know definitely recommend it but if you're not fighting against marines it's you know just all right uh, so then we move on to the power axe now the power axe is an extra point it's five points instead of four points over the others that we're talking about at the moment um, but what do you get for that extra point we get plus one strength now um, this in my opinion if you're a blood angel especially but also generally as marines makes this like the ultimate marine killer I say it's even better than the power sword in many ways um, because you've got AP minus two which means that you know when you're fighting you know Necrons or toughness four models 
often you're still wounding on a six up. When you're fighting against marines, you're you know still wound, uh, still they're only getting a five up wound, uh, five up armor save. Sorry, that's what I meant. Six up armor save, five up armor save. So you're still taking on marine equivalents that don't have power armor with that basically not their uh, six up save. And marines still are suffering on a five up save. You know they don't have the model count to be taking too many five up saves, so it's still effective. And you know because of that plus one strength, that's just all you need strength five is just what you need to tip you over the edge to as a general marine player wounding on three ups which gives you that real advantage it'll make you feel like a blood angels player you know having that plus one to wound um against marines and as a blood angels player you're then wounding marines on a two up because you're effectively strength five so three up and then the two up obviously so as a blood angel you know the power axe is insanely good it will just hack through marines like there's no tomorrow that minus two AP is really not a disadvantage. It's the perfectly balanced weapon because you just, you know, for your points, getting that little extra strength that you need to really put loads of wounds through, and you know the armor save trade off against a wider variety of targets, um, not just marines but marine equivalents is still extremely effective, as effective as the power sword is against marines. So you know it's a sort of the power axe for your extra point you're getting. Uh, a more flexible weapon that can really, really put a lot of wounds through on the enemy. It's a really effective um, weapon against strength four um, armies, a uh, toughness four army. Sorry, but it does have a serious disadvantage, which is that uh, there's really no point in using it against sort of toughness three uh, armies because that plus one strength is just a waste of time. You're already wounding them on three ups as a general space marine player or two ups as a uh, blood uh, blood angel so you know you don't with with a power sword because you strength four with your basic strength force you don't need that plus one strength it's just a waste of time total waste of points and that's one of the main focuses of the power axe is that plus one strength um yeah okay so you'll be hacking through guard armor hacking through guardian armor you know putting a uh, power uh, fire warriors on a six up so basically nothing you know it's really good at ta taking down the armor of toughness three models that you'll generally be facing troops and that kind of thing um, because it's got a really good balance of eight minus AP for them but the plus one strength is just a waste of time so it's still a good all-rounder but it's not great against those models especially when you're paying an extra point you know so it's not really worth it against if you play a lot of toughness three if your meta is a lot of toughness three armies parax is something i'd probably leave at home but if you play a lot of toughness four absolutely great tool you know really really essential weapon so next we have the power mall now the power mall is plus two strength and minus one ap so first things first it's not great against marines or in fact um, any toughness four army so if you play a lot of toughness four meta it's not a great um, weapon to take because um, that plus two strength really isn't giving you any advantages over the plus one strength that the power axe gives you um, and it's only minus one AP so not only are you not wounding them any better because it's not tipping you over to wound on two ups as a general space marine player but that minus one AP means you're really now only making marines save on a four up which isn't that bad um, so it's just really not that good against marines and most toughness four units that you'll face in toe-to-toe -to -toe in close combat however it is amazing against Eldar and toughness three in general um, so against Eldar vehicles as a blood angels player especially you will be strength six which means that you will be wounding as a general Imperium player those vehicles on a four up which suddenly makes your standard sergeants in your squads dotted around the battlefield really dangerous against Eldar skimmers um, not only that but as a Blood Angels player you'll actually be wounding them on three ups which means that you know again a unit of company veterans with a couple of power mauls in there can charge out put five attacks on an Eldar skimmer and finish one off you know really really effective hitting on threes wounding on threes and you know the minus one AP just if they've got, um, say, in a plane against Harlequins or something like that, or they've got an infant save cast on there or something like that, it won't matter because you're not paying for really good AP because the AP is only minus one. Uh, against Guardsmen 
and other toughness 3 models again it's absolutely fantastic because you're not paying much for minor for AP so you know against um, models like um, guardsmen that have a 5 up save they're getting a 6 up save which is takes them from you know reasonably survivable on mass to you know hacking through them smashing through them really easily against units like uh, fire warriors and that for a four up save you know you still wound them on two ups which is absolutely fantastic you get loads of wounds through get all your wounds through um, and then you know you're still taking down their armor save to a, a five up which isn't great um, because you know they won't have loads of them necessarily so you know the power mall is great against toughness three uh, it's also really really good against death guard because as a um, specifically in close combat as a Imperium Space Marine or Blood Angel player you will often struggle in close combat against Death Guard units specifically because of their toughness 5 which means that you can't just rely on your men to hold their own in close combat you'll bounce off a lot of the time because you're wounding on 5 ups but that power maul not only makes you wound on a 4 up but it actually makes you wound on a 3 up as a general Imperium player which means you're you know, back in your comfort zone getting those wounds through, hitting on a 3-up, wounds on a 3-up, just as you should be as a Space Marine. So, you know, if you're struggling against an opponent, like one of your friends, or someone at the club has Death Guard, and you're always getting your ass handed to you in close combat when you're uh, fighting squad on squad, you know, Power Mauls will tip the balance in your favour. That is the secret that you are looking for. You know, the minus 1 AP, yeah, it's a bit of a difference, but really, you're struggling to get those wounds through, and, you know, deal with the armour save when it comes to it. They've got loads of saves anyway, you just want to get the wounds through. So, you know, and as a Blood Angel player, you'll be wounding Death Guard on two ups, which is absolutely sick. It's so good to see the look on your opponent's face when you're wounding them on a two up with a general uh, tactical marine or uh, assault marine sergeant with a power maul. Uh, so, you know, power mauls are really good, but only in specific circumstances, um, such as against Eldar vehicles, um, against Death Guard, or just generally against. Um, objective secured troops that are toughness 3. Power swords are generally good all rounders but not as good but have some serious holes in their abilities and power axes are probably your best solid marine killer uh, but not that good against toughness 3 they're all right you know the AP minus 2 is good against most toughness 3 stuff but the strength is a bit of a waste of time so, so for that extra point not really worth it so depending on what you're facing those are your options now a little bit of a caveat on those power weapons is um, as a Blood Angels player you can take the Encarmine Sword and the Encarmine Axe on your Sanguinary Guard and those weapons are exactly the same as a Power Axe or a Power Sword so the same points apply however they are D3 damage um, so you know against Terminators and stuff like that um, Encarmine Axes are absolutely brutal as a Blood Angels player because you will be wounding, you know, Terminators and the Terminator equivalents on a two up. You know, you'll be taking down their save to just the equivalent of whatever their invun is with that minus two AP, so you're not spending too much on your minus AP. And you know, you're probably on a D3 gonna kill a two wound model most of the time. So you know, and Carmine Axe is absolutely sick. Uh, and Carmine Swords also really good. Now um we'll move on to the sort of more that uh, the more powerful weapons that do D3 and flat 3 damage. Um, so from your Encarmine weapons you then move on to the Mastercrafted Power Sword. Now that's just the same as a Power Sword but it does D2 damage and it's a little more expensive and only certain models such as Captains can take them. Excuse me. But you know that D2 damage, you know, if you can get that 4, 5 or 6 it's a nice little extra poke. It can really uh, give you just that little upper hand that you need in character on character combat. If you have a basic character with a mastercrafted power sword and he goes against another sort of mid level basic character, no, no one too fancy, no character killing special abilities, you know, you'll just have that little edge with that D2 damage, relatively cheap, um, and that's nice. That can, uh, that can help you do some character assassinations. Uh, moving up, we have the power fist. Now that's strength times two. So that means as an Imperium player you'll wound almost any infantry model on a two up because you'll be strength eight. So you know, really, really good against anything up to toughness four, wound on a two up. 
and as a Blood Angels player you'll wound basically anything on a 2 up because anything up to toughness 8 um, you would um, uh, up to toughness 7 you would wound on a 3 up and the Blood Angels advantage makes you wound on a 2 up and against things like Knights and uh, Lehman Russes and Land Raiders you'll be wounding on a 3 up so Thunderhammer really really good as a cheap little way of getting the initial wounds through on really tough models that you struggle to take down and that's really good because often when you're playing against armies such as knights you know really high table or you know mid to high table armies such as knights your general tactical marine units and that kind of thing when you take an all comers list to a tournament uh, can often be sort of almost a waste of time against uh, knight armies and things like that because they can't really do any damage they're only wounding on sixes whether they're in close combat or shooting you really want to keep them out of the way of knights and you don't really want to use them to sort of charge in and try and put some wounds on even on a really really badly damaged knight you don't even want to risk finish them off because he will kill them and you don't want to chance it on a six up but having a power fist on a sergeant um, means that you can send that guy in uh, with your tactical marines or with your assault marines into a knight and you know get some wounds through and yeah they'll still have a save but you know and uh, but you'll have a five up but you know you're making those units actually viable in the game instead of being basically unusable apart from running away and trying to stay alive and hope the knights don't just rip you apart with AP man's four weaponry and like cling onto an objective at the last minute you know you can actually use them if you need to to get in there and do some damage so it actually power fists are a cheap way of making tactical units you know effective on the tournament scene against more heavy hitting lists um, and they're also really good at just like running up to skimmers running up to vehicles that get in your face and just smashing them because you know you just wound in toughness six toughness seven on a two up as a blood angel uh, three up as a general imperium player so really good now um that takes uh, the disadvantages obviously it's only d3 damage which means you can't rely on it you know if you get a bad roll on your wounds that go through you will only do a little bit of damage so you can't really hit hard and that's where the thunder hammer comes in now the disadvantage of the thund thunder hammer is it takes two hands uh, and the disadvantage of both these weapons is it's minus one to hit so as a space moon player you'll be hitting on four ups now um the thunder hammer you're going to see more on characters and is more expensive at almost twice the points double the points to take it on a character over a model such as a death company you know mem uh, squad member but um the thunder hammer gives you flat 3 damage now flat 3 damage is absolutely incredible and you know I can go on forever about the thunder hammer but I will probably do a specific video on the thunder hammer and also I have a gone on extensively about using it alongside terminators in my assault terminators video and i encourage you to go and watch that um in its entirety because i do go uh, do go into a variety of tactics and uh explain the way the thunder hammer is effective in quite some detail for you um now uh it doesn't really need explaining the advantage of having the flat three damage means that you are just going to absolutely if you get wounds through on anything you are just going to kill it and you know as a blood angels player strength uh, strength eight uh, you're going to be wounding you know land raiders and knights and all kinds of things on a three up and you know anything else on a two up you know really really effective and when it gets through flat three damage whatever you hit probably going to kill it now um onto some weapons that you in a eighth edition don't see as often but are very effective when you know how to use them so first of all, I'll uh, briefly go over the Lightning Claw. Now the Lightning Claw is AP minus two, uh, but it has, uh, and you just have your base strength. So it's like a power sword, but not as good. Uh, Marines are getting a five up armor save. Now the, the extra advantages of a Lightning Claw is if you take them in pairs, you get an extra attack. So Lightning Claws on a Jump Pack Captain, or even a Captain Terminator armor, can be really, really good at clearing off objectives from a variety of troops and infantry models you know they are your infantry killer any infantry unit doesn't matter if it's toughness 4 toughness 3 what its armor save is you're re-rolling wounds and you'll have an extra attack with a pair of lightning claws so you're going to get your hits on on your 3 up you know if you're a character you're going to be hitting on 2 ups 
Rerolling once, you're going to get all your hits on. You'll have an extra attack, uh, so you don't need to, you know, to ha use a warlord trait for an extra attack or anything like that. And then you'll wound on threes as a blood angel twos against most infantry, uh, and you're rerolling. So you know, as a blood angels player, a captain with dual lightning claws and a jump pack is a really good sort of support model um, early on uh, in the game, and then he can jump and jump around the battlefield later on supporting other units, getting where he needs to be and hacking up infantry that he charge into that he charges into and like turning the tide when you're trying to take objectives. So no, pair lightning claws really, really effective, especially on the type of models that you're taking them on because they just synergize really nicely. Really, really nicely. Um, then we'll go on to the Crozius Arcanum. Now this is plus one strength, minus one AP and two damage. But you'll be taking it on a chaplain, which means he'll be wounding on, hitting on two ups, re-rolling. So you're almost always getting three hits on your opponent. And the man, the plus one strength is the same advantage that I said in the power act. You know, as an as an, a general Imperium player, general Space Marine player, your chaplain will be wounding. You know, toughness four models on a three up. Um, really really good and the minus one AP just means that you know if you're fighting against characters you will be um, generally just taking them down to their inherent invun save anyway because most characters have a fork so if you're using your chaplain as a support character and you know he's in terminator armor he's got a jump pack and he's supporting your main uh, your main assault units he can go toe to toe with enemy characters and most of the time win because uh, he's got just that little bit of extra strength that tips him over and makes him really really good at uh, getting those uh, wounds through, he hits on two ups and when he gets those wounds through if they fail their saves it's two damage a pop and what I really like to do if I'm sort of in the mood and it's one of the many warlord traits I, I take but uh, I, I like to uh, give my chaplain terminator armor and make him my warlord and I don't really make him my warlord if he's just got a jump pack because I found that he just gets killed too easily but as a if he's in terminator armor he's just a little bit tougher uh, a little bit harder to kill uh, and having flat three damage is like having a mini thunder hammer and you can use that thunder hammer uh, use that mini thunder hammer in close combat it's just as effective against characters you know and when they fail that four up infant save or five up infant save uh, or four up save you know you just bang three wounds through and you know if he gets a couple attacks through hitting on twos wound on twos you know he'll murder a lot of characters so Crozis Arcanum great weapon uh, for character hunting uh, with your chaplain so then we've got the last couple of weapons that I want to talk about today um, I'll mention force weapons briefly but basically a force axe is just the same as a normal power axe but d3 damage and a force stave is plus 2 strength uh, minus 1 AP so the same as a power maul effectively uh, and so the same things apply there um, but the last two weapons that I'm going to mention are the eviscerator or eviscerator and the relic blade now the eviscerator is a great weapon it is absolutely absolutely hilarious it is expensive um, but in certain circumstances it is just ridiculous it is one of those weapons that really lets you shock your opponent and make them take a step back so the eviscerator is strength times two which means you know as an imperium player and as a blood angel player you'll be wounding any characters on a, generally on a two up you know because you'll be double strength to, if they're toughness four uh, so wounding on, a th uh, wounding on a two up and you just wound almost anything on a two up against Lehman Russes you know you're wounding uh, on a three up um, because you're as a Blood Angel player you would you know tough, you're matching their toughness uh, and it's AP minus four so you know a Lehman Russ gets no save against it a Land Raiders on a six up save takes his knight a knight down to an it's normal five, five up invun, and you're wounding a knight on a three up. So you know you can have just a normal sergeant, assault marine sergeant. You know with an eviscerator, you know you take your opponent through the your list. You say da 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 da, and that's got an eviscerator. They go, oh yeah. They may not even ask you what it does. If they do, you say yeah, strength times two, eight minus four. That might make them think, hmm, what is that? And it'll affect their play, you know potentially, or they may disregard it, and you can just jump out. At an opportune moment and hit some really high toughness 
high armor save model and just bump, knock a few wounds off it. Because it's also D3 damage. Now the disadvantage is it is minus one to hit and it's two hands I believe. But with the kind of unit that will be taking it, you can always still throw crack grenades. So you'll be in their faces, six inches away, pop a crack grenade, get you know some damage on there, charge in with your eviscerator, strength times two, AP minus four, D3 damage, you will just knock the teeth out of massive big units. And again, it's one of those weapons where, you know, if you go into a tournament and you'll be facing a massive variety of uh, lists and you think you'll be placing mid to high, uh, you want to be able to use every unit in every game. And paying the points for an eviscerator in a tournament game, it's not just for fluffy lists. In a tournament game, you know, it can allow you to charge out and hit really high toughness units like knights with basic units like uh, assault marine units and um, so you know really really good good weapon um, now uh, the relic blade is plus two strength minus three AP so it has all the advantages of a power more you know wounding toughness three models on um, on twos uh, just naturally as an Imperium player and it's AP minus three D3 damage so you you're paying 21 points for this off the top of my head and I don't really generally take relic blades because you're basically paying for everything yes you've got your plus two strength so you wound almost anything on threes or two ups whether you're imperium or blood angels you know, you've got minus three AP so if they've just got a, a basic armor save with no invun you know you'll be wound getting through that armor save basically all the time and d3 damage means whether it's one wound or a higher wound model you'll always be getting enough wounds on there to make a difference and yet I still don't take them because for 21 points on the models that you can take them on, you know, it's almost either too much of an investment or not specifically good enough at anything. It's almost always overkill. It's like, not it's not a jack of all trades. It is in many ways a master of all trades. And yet, it's a too high point investment for that. Because often, the model carrying it will die. They'll only have a three-up armor save, usually. Uh may well not have an invent save if you're thinking of taking it on cer certain models and it's just too much and sort of a lot of the sort of ethos you should take think with your power weapons is what is my meta what what am i facing against what situations am i going to be in am i just going against a pickup game uh, in my local uh, club am i going to a tournament what am i going to be facing and what is the right weapon for the likely situations I will be facing. So you need to go through, you need to think, right, am I taking power sword because I'll be going against a lot of marines, uh, you know, loads and loads of marines. Uh, am I going to be going um, against loads and loads of Eldar? Am I going to be going against uh, a wide variety of units? Could I be facing really high toughness units? And you need to analyze the situation that you're going into and decide what is the best weapon for you in those situations um, based on what I have discussed today. So that is the Scholar Progenium, that is everything you need to know about power weapons. Thank you very much for your time, goodbye.